Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Thursday, May 27th. We're continuing out of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. This is about Rahab, is who we're commemorating. Rahab's story is found in the book of Joshua. Rahab was a sex worker who hid Hebrew spies in her home while they were on a reconnaissance mission to Jericho. Fearing the God of Israel more than her own king, Rahab agreed to help the spies if they would protect her and her family when God delivered her city to them. Though she is an unlikely saint, Rahab is remembered by the authors of Matthew, Hebrews, and James as a faithful witness and an ancestor of Jesus. Her story is a reminder that sinners make the best saints in God's story. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. And our song for this morning is, It is Well with My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, When sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. The Lord is God in heaven above, and God is on earth below. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 121, verses 1 through 3, and then jumping ahead to verses 7 and 8. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot be moved, and the one who watches over you will not fall asleep. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is God who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth forevermore. The Lord is God in heaven above, and God is on earth below. Our Old Testament reading comes from Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent out two spies from Shittim, ordering them, Go, scout out the territory, especially Jericho. The two spies set off and went to Jericho. There they went to the house of an innkeeper named Rahab, where they spent the night. When the word reached the ruler of Jericho that two Israelites had arrived that evening to scout the territory, The ruler sent this message to Rahab, Bring me the two who are lodging in your house, for they are here to spy on the land. But Rahab took the two spies and hid them, then told the ruler, Yes, they did come here, but I didn't know where they were from. And after dark, knowing that the gate would be closed soon, they left. I don't know where they went, but you might catch up with them if you hurry. As a matter of fact, Rahab had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under stalks of flax stored there. The ruler's posse set off in pursuit down the road that crosses the Jordan at a ford, but as soon as the posse had left, they shut the gate. The spies had not yet bedded down when Rahab came to them on the roof. She said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. Dread of you has fallen on us, and the inhabitants of this land are terror-stricken. We've heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Sea of Reeds ahead of you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sion and Og, the Amorite rulers east of the Jordan, whom you utterly destroyed. We heard all this, and we lost heart. Because of you, no one has any courage left. For the Lord your God is truly God, and heaven and above earth and heaven above and earth below. <clears throat> Please swear to me by the Lord that you will show mercy to my family as I have shown mercy to you. Give me a sign of good faith. Promise me that you'll spare the lives of my mother and father, sisters and brothers, and all who belong to them. Deliver us from death. The spies replied, We pledge our lives for yours, as long as you do not disclose our mission. When the Lord gives us this land, we will show true loyalty to you. Then Rahab let them down through the window with a rope. 
She lived in a house built against the city's outer wall. And she said to them, Go up into the hills and hide out there from your pursuers. Stay there for three days until the posse returns. Then you can go on your way. The two then warned her, When we evade this country, the country, we will keep this oath you made us swear, provided you tie this scarlet cord to the window through which you to let us down. You must also gather your mother and father, your sisters and brothers, your entire family into this house. Should any of them pass through the doors of the house and go into the street, their blood will be on their own heads and will be released from our oath. But if they stay in the house with you and anyone lays a hand on them, their blood will be on our heads. If, however, if you betray us and tell any one of our plans, we will be free of the oath you made us to take. Let it be as you say, Rahab replied, and sent the spies on their way, and she tied the scarlet cord to the window. Our New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 24. <clears throat> The 72 disciples returned with joy, saying, Rabbi, even the demons obey us in your name. Jesus replied, I watched Satan fall from the sky like lightning. Look, I've given you the power to tread on snakes and scorpions, even all the forces of the enemy, and nothing will ever injure you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in the fact that the spirits obey you as much as that your names... Don't rejoice in the fact that the spirits obey you so much as that your names are inscribed in heaven. At that moment, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I offer you praise, Abba, ruler of heaven and earth, because what you have hidden from the learned and the clever you have revealed to mere children. Yes, Abba, you have graciously willed it so. Everything has been entrusted to me by you. No one knows me except through you, and no one knows you except through me and those to whom I choose to reveal you. Turning to the disciples, Jesus spoke to them privately. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many prophets and rulers wanted to see what you see, but never saw it, to hear what you hear, but never heard it. The Lord is God in heaven above, and God is on earth below. In his rule for monastic community, Benedict of Nursia wrote, Any guest who happens to arrive at the monastery should be received just as we would receive Christ himself, because he promised that on the last day he will say, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Proper respect should be shown to everyone, while a special welcome is reserved for those who are of the household of our Christian faith and for pilgrims. As soon as the arrival of a guest is announced, the superior and members of the community should hurry to offer a welcome with warm-hearted courtesy. First of all, they should pray together so as to seal their encounter in the peace of Christ. Prayer should come first, and then the kiss of peace so to evade any delusions which the devil may contrive. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you receive all of us sinners, asking only that we turn from death toward life. Today we choose life wherever we find a stranger and welcome her. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.